in hell. But the Board of Airport Commissioners approves TNCs for drop-offs at the airport and now pickups too. TNCs are less expensive than hailing a cab. The customers want them. They're adding to the economy. They're creating jobs. They're helping with traffic. They're helping with air quality. These are all a reality. Now, you hold it but against TNCs is Councilman Paul Koretz. One reason, fear of increased airport traffic. Through the addition of thousands of for hire vehicles that could increase congestion and pollution. Those environmental impacts were not analyzed. There was no opportunity for public input provided. Koretz also says TNCs are breaking laws by not following the same rules as taxis, like driver background checks, services for disabled passengers, and mandatory paperwork. The California Public Utilities Commission recommends a $7 million fine against Uber for failing to turn over documents. Still, the airport board likes them. But customers are demanding the, the TNCs, and so we're listening to that also. So I'm hoping that we have reached a good balance here. It looks like no one's going to go away happy today. Final so, approval is still needed from L.A. city leaders. Gil Reyes for L.A. This Week. Uber, Lyft, and other TNCs could be picking up passengers at the airport by September. While city leaders hope a new initiative will improve our students' ability to compete on a global scale by getting them up to speed. Here's the final part in our CityLink LA series. So what we're looking at is actually uh, literally pond scum from a, uh, an old fountain that just had some water laying around in it. Using this state-of-the-art microscope, USC professor Richard Weinberg shows us this highly magnified and crystal clear image of a bacteria that's normally invisible to the naked eye. But this vibrant and crisp picture isn't only being seen here at USC, but also by students at a STEM high school in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's because the microscope is connected to USC's high-speed network and is able to stream high-definition images to distant locations. The students there can see what we're seeing through the microscope, uh, the same thing that the marine microbiologists are seeing simultaneously, and the students at the high school can also control the microscope remotely. This education tool at USC is only part of the many innovations taking place at the university level, and it wouldn't be possible without high-speed Internet. But with city leaders taking steps to provide high-speed internet service to all residents and businesses in Los Angeles through an initiative called CityLink LA, Weinberg says the plan will change the face of education. It would really be a dramatic way of allowing people to connect to universities, allowing schools to connect to universities, and allowing individuals to connect to resources that they otherwise can't interface with. The initiative is being spearheaded by Councilmember Bob Blumenfield, who says the student of the future is a connected student. He says too many are falling behind because they don't have basic, high-speed, low-cost access that they need to succeed. We want our kids to be competitive in the future, and if also we want to build a workforce for Los Angeles that's going to be able to make Los Angeles competitive in the future. We need to take the kids of today and make sure that they are connected uh, and that they know they're familiar with the technology and that they're able to take advantage of all that high-speed access uh, can provide. It's the lifeblood of how people communicate. I mean, they have to be connected, and they have to be connected in a way that it's quick, where there's no latency issues, where they can send everything as small as a text and as big as a large video. And for L.A. students, officials hope access to high-speed Internet will offer new and exciting learning opportunities. Well, it's been his pride and joy for nearly a decade. L.A. City Council President Herb Wesson says the program not only keeps him young, but keeps city kids busy and active during the summer. Rasha Goel has more. Juanita Solares is a first-time attendee of Camp Wesson, but she says it won't be her last. I heard about this, and um, they're saying it's really, they're, it was really fun. So um, I thought, oh, why should I not come, and I really like fun. Um, so I came, and I'm really starting to like it. Now in its ninth year, Camp Wesson, put on by council member Herb Wesson, provides at-risk youth ages 8 to 12 with an opportunity to experience summer camp activities. Imagine a day with all fun and no parents. Horseback riding is my favorite and kayaking is something interesting. You want to take kids that don't have the opportunity and let them sleep under the stars and no helicopters or anything like this, but they love horseback riding. 
which is a blast. And we have rock climb, mountain climbing, arts and crafts. We have archery, uh, kayaking, canoeing. The councilman is hands on at the camp, making his own tie dye t-shirt here. And he even spends the night on the campgrounds. I come up here with them. I stay the entire time, whatever they eat. I eat and I spend most of my time, they give me this little like uh, Jeep type vehicle. So I ride all around and check on the kids at the various uh, uh, things that they do. So it's a blast. About 100 kids came out for the three day, two night camp where they were provided with food, clothing and shelter. In fact, the tents you see behind me were put up by the kids themselves to give them the true outdoor camping experience. It was fun too, because um, we had a team. So we build it um, fast. It's wonderful watching the kids grow also, the ones that come back and they remember you and they enjoy the experiences again and it's, it's fun. While Camp Wesson gives the kids something to do for three days, it also gives the parents some free time of their own. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Camp Wesson takes place every summer. While the Turner Classic Movies Network recently co-hosted an auction of rare movie posters from Hollywood's golden age, and some from even earlier, Gil Reyes takes us back to the day when movie posters were illustrated by hand. These recently auctioned works of art are some of the priciest movie posters out there. Many movie posters are very reasonable. You can pick them up for $10, $20, $50. The ones we have here are more rare examples, so the very pinnacle, the most classic, most popular Hollywood movies. And here we also have a lot of foreign examples, so really great illustrated posters from Italy, France, Poland, um, so things are a little bit more rare and unusual. The most expensive poster here, this one from the 1935 Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers film Top Hat, valued at up to $40,000. Bonham's auctioneers and Turner Classic Movies recently teamed up in Hollywood to offer these prints to the highest bidders. Much like baseball cards, they're valued for the rarity and condition, also closeness to the original prints and the film's popularity. The oldest movie poster here? This one for Edison's The Passion Play. Printed way back in 1898, it's one of the oldest movie posters in existence. Estimated price between $1,200 to $1,800. For people today, it's, you know, a really great chance to see what movie posters used to look like. Um, and we've kind of lost that, that art of hand illustrations. Now, on top of this auction, which is solely movie posters, TCM and Bonhams has teamed up for an even bigger auction of movie memorabilia. Two of those auctions held so far over $16 million raised. The next one to take place in November. In Hollywood, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. November's auction will take place in New York, but Angelinos can participate online or by phone. While he's helped guide the city for 50 years as cop, as police chief, and as council member, but now as Bernard Parks retires from public office, he leaves behind a documentary of his years in public service. Anna Marcos has more. Former council member Bernard Parks among the VIPs at this movie premiere at the Rave Theater in Baldwin Hills. The occasion the documentary Biography Battles and Bernard, a look back at Parks and his 50 years in public office, a project produced by his own son and chief of staff, Bernie Parks Jr. Feels good. It's a good way to end uh, 50 years for him and 12 years for me. And now we're going to go in and watch a movie, have a little popcorn and things like that. And uh, just enjoy ourselves and uh, be with some people that we grew up in the city with. The two-hour documentary paints a picture of Parks as a man caught in the crosshairs of critical moments in L.A. history over the last five decades. Parks experienced the Watts riots as a new LAPD officer in 1965, the Rodney King beating and riots in 1991. As police chief, he saw his own granddaughter gunned down on the streets of L.A., killed by a stray bullet. He became captain during a time of racism in the LAPD. Captains got cars, but black captains got cars with the N-word written all over them. A black lieutenant came in and somebody put a watermelon on his desk. Uh, they would put tarantulas in your locker. Parks finally made police chief in 1997, only to inherit the Rampart scandal, which brought to light corruption in the LAPD. Parks fired corrupt officers and set about reforming the LAPD, but tried to resist outside intervention in the form of the federal consent decree. 
Critics felt his reforms weren't coming fast enough. The officer terminations and his reported iron fist did not make him popular, and Mayor Jim Hahn refused to renew his term as police chief. Park then ran for council member and won by a landslide. In the last 12 years, he has dedicated himself to promoting economic development in his South L.A. district, another big issue balancing the city's budget. The budget crisis that we've been in uh, is going to cause people to take a fresh look. I don't think we can keep doing what we've been doing. Parks, a husband, father, and grandfather, is now about to embark on a new chapter in his life as he is termed out of office. Did you like the story? Yes. Okay. I like the story. Too. You, you like the story, too? He is out of the public spotlight for now, but we get a feeling he's not done yet. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. Park's handsome looks, by the way, didn't go unnoticed. He was named one of the 50 most beautiful people in People magazine in 1998. And as the Special Olympics torch made its way through the different neighborhoods of Los Angeles, Angelinos captured it all on social media. That's the focus on This Week in Tweets. The LA Dodgers posted and Special Olympics CA retweeted a video of the torch being lit at Dodger Stadium, tweeting, the passing of the torch at Special Olympics. The Los Angeles Fire Department South Bureau posted a few photos of a fire truck escorting the athletes through the city. They tweeted, LAFD South welcomes the Special Olympic athletes and torch to LA. What an honor to be part of this amazing event. An LA Airport Police tweeted a photo of delegates from Nambia, tweeting a very special time for officers to share diversity and acceptance in true Special Olympic style. And that's a look at This Week in Tweets. While the LA River is one step closer to a major makeover, LA City Council's newest member targets a homeless encampment in South LA and honoring first responders. All these stories in City Beat. A plan to restore the Los Angeles River was unanimously approved by the Civil Works Review Board of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in Washington, D.C., following Mayor Eric Garcetti's visit to the nation's capital. The move will allow federal engineers to request funding from Congress for the project. The $1.3 billion plan will restore natural elements along an 11-mile stretch of the river. Improvements will include widening the river in key areas, restructuring channel banks to support vegetation, creating side channels and off-channel march, and removing invasive vegetation. Recreation features will include trails, vista points, educational amenities, and pedestrian bridges. I'm confident that we can write a new chapter that is as bold and as brave as the one from the 1930s, but even richer. A homeless encampment was removed from a vacant city lot in South Los Angeles at the request of one of the city council's newest members. Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson called for the cleanup of the transportation department lot at 86 and Broadway on July 1st, the day he was sworn into the Los Angeles City Council. Harris Dawson's first motion upon entering office asked that city staff take immediate steps to address a homeless encampment that has just sprung up at the city lot. The request was made in response to calls from activists who held a protest a day earlier saying the vacant lot has attracted trash dumping and a homeless encampment. A councilman aide said the gates of the lot have been secured to prevent individuals from further entering, but personal items from the encampment still lie on the streets. City Councilman Bob Blumenfield, the LAPD, LAFD, and CHP gathered at the Boys and Girls Club of the West Valley in Canoga Park to unveil a six-foot-tall blue Dalmatian sculpture. It's about honoring, uh, I mean, you know, one thing, it's great, it's great for the kids, but it's about, it's about honoring uh, our public safety officials and, and our, our first responders and, and getting kids to connect with that. The sculpture called Our Hero was donated by the Hero in You Foundation, which is dedicated to honoring first responders and inspiring kids to want to be heroes in their own lives. Uh, a lot of us grew up wanting to be firefighters, and uh, this is a great connection between both. A new vibrant art exhibit arrives in Palace Verdes, a major milestone for a city dance company, and a golden goodbye to the Special Olympics. All these in this week's Things to Do.
Los Verdes Art Center is pleased to announce a Garden of Excesses, a solo exhibition by the Cuban artist Angel Ricardo Ricardo Rios. The exhibition features paintings, drawings, and monumental inflatable sculptures by the artist. It opens on Friday, July 31st, and is followed by a garden party on Saturday, August 1st. The Festival of Art, Music, and Food features visual art workshops and live painting by Rios himself. Check it out on Saturday, August 1st from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Palace Verdes Art Center, located at 5504 West Crestridge Road in Rancho Palace Verdes. <laughs> This year marks the 30th anniversary of the Rangoli Foundation for Art and Culture. In celebration of this landmark occasion, join Rangoli Dance Company for the acclaimed work from RDC Repertory, Sacred Geometry. Sacred Geometry is a favorite of audiences and company dancers, using geometric figures and shapes to describe the beauty of creation. The performance takes place from 7 to 8.30 p.m. on Saturday, August 1st at the Barnsdall Gallery Theater, located at 4800 Hollywood Boulevard. For more, visit rangoli.org. On Sunday, August 2nd, Los Angeles bids farewell to 2015's Special Olympics World Games at the L.A. Coliseum. The week-long competition, the largest sports and humanitarian event of its kind, is easily the biggest gathering in L.A. since the 84 Olympics. More than 7,000 children and adults with intellectual disabilities compete in 25 sports at venues everywhere, from Long Beach to Encino. The final festivities of the Games will pay tribute to the athletes, families, coaches, volunteers, and supporters who have come together for a successful and inspirational event. World-class entertainers and celebrities will headline the celebration. The Coliseum is located at 3911 South Figueroa Street. For more details and for tickets, visit LA2015.org. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. This isn't going to hurt me one bit. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Shapiro in beautiful Encino, and you're watching LA City View, Channel 35. Our city, our channel. Open wide.
Good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Friday, July 31st, the very last day of July and wanted to welcome all of you here as well. And uh, I believe we have a quorum. We're also carried live on Channel 35 and streaming on the internet. And so thank you all for being here this morning. Uh, if we could, please call the roll. Blumenfield, Bonner, Buscato, Sodeo, Englander, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Wiesar, Carez, Gregorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson, 10 members present, and a quorum, Mr. President. Great. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk. Let's go ahead and uh, take the first order of business, please. Approval of the minutes. Okay. Mr. Buscayano moves. Mr. Sodeo seconds. Next item. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Okay. Mr. Fuentes moves. Mr. Harris, Dawson seconds. Thank you very much. Next Mr. President. Mr. President, there are recommendations to receive and file items 1C and 1M in as much as the liens have been paid in full and to continue items 1D, 1F, and 1J to August 12. Okay, that'll be the order without objection, members. Next items. Mr. President, items 1 and 2 are items noticed for public hearing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll hold those. President? Oh, yes, Mr. Fuentes. Uh, um, can we also continue items 1I, uh, 1K, and 1L for two weeks as well? And L. That'll be the order. And uh, that date brings us to August 14. August 14th. Does that work for you, Mr. Fuentes? Great. Excellent. Okay. Next items, please. Uh, well, 1 and 2, we have cards on, sir. Okay. 1 and 2, we'll go ahead and hold on the desk. And uh, seeing no other items... With cards, any specials, members? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the roll. Uh, I, I, I'm okay. sorry, sir. Uh, there are no items remaining. We have cards on both. Oh, okay. The next items, please. Items three through seven are items which public hearings have been held. Committee reports for all items have been submitted. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, specials, members? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the roll on those remaining items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. And Mr. President, those ORDs will go over for one uh, week unless reconsidered later with 12 members. Great, excellent. Okay, that'll be the order. Next item, please. Item eight is an item for which a public hearing has not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, those are uh, before us for consideration for item eight. Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Ten eyes. And do we have cards on eight? Yes, sir, we do. We'll hold that as well. Next item, please. On the continuation agenda, item 9 is an item for which a public hearing has been held. Okay. Yes. Can you hold item Perfect. 9 on the desk for an amending motion? That'll be the order. We'll go ahead and hold item 9 for Councilwoman Martinez. So granted. Okay. And uh, I believe then that takes us to the special meeting. Yes, sir. However, uh, entering the special, you cannot exit until all items right. have okay. been disposed of. Right, okay. So we're going to go ahead and we'll take that now to Councilmember Price for some special presentations. The floor is yours. I don't think I've ever heard Council Chamber so quiet. <laughs> This is lovely. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. President, for your firm and steady and fair leadership. That's a testament to you. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. President, members, uh, you know, from time to time, we acknowledge the extraordinary achievements of members of the city family. Uh, and today, at the close of Muslim Heritage Month, I just want to take a moment to honor uh, a number of Los Angeles's finest. Uh, these LAPD officers standing with me, gentlemen, why don't you join me, please? These LAPD officers standing with me today put their lives on the line every day to ensure public safety. They are also active in the Los Angeles Muslim American community and provide positive role models for the youth that they work with every day. I'm pleased to be joined today by uh, Omar Ricci, a reserve officer with the LA Police Department uh, who works in financial technology. Omar. Thank you, sir. We would thank you for your service. We also want to acknowledge, um, uh, uh, acknowledge a senior lead officer, Rashid Sharif, uh, who works out of the West LA uh, division, I think for 15, 
Yeah, uh, 16 years. 16 years. Okay. Thanks. We again appreciate your service. And last but not least, Detective uh, Rashid uh, Sarif, uh, who was born in the 9th District, born and raised in the 9th, as I understand, and works uh, out of the West uh, LA Division also. We want to thank uh, these gentlemen for their, for their service, uh, for their honor, for their commitment uh, to, uh, to our community, to making it safe, to making it stronger. Uh, and again, we just appreciate the positive role models that they provide uh, for our youth and others in the community. Let's give them a hand, please. Let's give them another round of applause. The finest of the finest. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, I think what, what you got to do there, Mr. Price, is have them put their left arm in so you can get all those hash marks in the picture. Come on. Years of service right there. There we go. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, while they're taking pictures, um, we're going to go ahead and take a couple of the items. So we can go through the agenda on items one, two, and eight. We have cards from Mr. Walsh. We're going to take all three items together, one, two, and eight. I'm sorry, one, two, and yeah, one, two, and hold on one second, eight. One, two, and eight, Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org, or J. Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. We have a new post up on our website, and for identification purposes only, chair of the anybody but uh, Mitch Englander for supervisor. Item one, okay, this is, uh, this concerns uh, a pl an area of building and safety where you uh, actually do a good job. However, if you feel you have an unjust lien, come down here and they will either dismiss your unjust lien or they will greatly reduce it. As you know, we counsel the people down here with unjust liens and as you know, no one ever comes up here the second time. They come up here once, say it's unjust, if they don't come back again when it's actually voted on after it's been postponed, that means the lien has been eliminated. Incidentally, as you know, landlords are, south in South L.A., landlords get away with murder. If you're a renter in, in South L.A., the landlord can do any damn thing he wants. However, if you're in West L.A., where, <laughs> believe me, the Israelis who live there, and we call it little uh, Israel now, not, uh, uh, many of them aren't even uh, Jewish, but they're, they're from Israel. Uh, believe me, you can get away with murder west of L.A. if, you're, uh, if, you're a, uh, if you own property, uh, rental property. Number three, no, excuse me, number two is, of course, uh, the fire department and emergency ambulances. The fire department actually does a very good job with the emergency ambulances, as far as I can see. Because I, was, I, I, I saw a car go through a plate glass window uh, near the Sunset Strip in the L.A. part, and the ambulance was there in God, must have been about 90 seconds. However, the fire department doesn't do a, it does a terrible job when it comes uh, to protecting buildings from arson. We still uh, would like, so the fire department, the emergency ambulance service, remember, when you do a good job, I'm the first one to congratulate the, uh, the fire department. And incidentally, if you're black or if you're brown or if you're Asian, forget about the fire department. The only people who get into the class are the children of the current fire department uh, personnel. It's totally racist. Uh, now, number eight is, again, it's uh, REAP. Now, uh, this is Rent Escrow Account Program. Again, and people 
stop me in the street and thank me for alerting them to reap. The city has rules about your apartment. If it, in code, not in code. The city will come, and the city has come to my apartment and checked out things, and even things I didn't notice that were out of code, they got repaired. Uh, I don't have a really bad landlord. But the point I'm making now is if anything in, on, in your rental unit is out of code, and you can call, they'll send someone over. It'll take a couple of weeks, but they'll send someone over. And then the, the landlord refuses to fix it in a reasonable amount of time. What happens is that the, in, in the city of Los Angeles only, the landlord doesn't get the rent anymore. You pay your rent to the city till the landlord brings your unit up to code. This is very important, as you can say, here we have uh, out of code just today, I mean, just for Friday, one, two, three, four, five, six, incident seven, eight, nine. Uh, and they're all in South LA because uh, ba basically if you're a renter west of La, La Brea, uh, th those landlords pay off the city council. So very, very seldom does anything come up here uh, that's west. Remember, there's two cities, east of La Brea, west of La Brea. East of La Brea is a minority city. West of La Brea is Little Israel. And I'm Jewish, incidentally, Hungarian Jew. HollywoodHighlands.org. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we have one car on 1B. Emma Flores. Emma Flores? And then the final card after Emma will be Rosemary Allegra on 1A. Okay. This is 1B. B as in Buscaina. Yes. Ah, sí, me, me llegó un ticket de una, de una uh, drenaje que estábamos uh, arreglando. I received a y, uh, citation eh, due to a drainage problem we were trying to repair. Y hubo confusión, les dije de qué era, me dijeron, pensamos que era por, por lo que estábamos haciendo. Me dijeron que no, que era del, de un camión que estaba fuera por lo mismo que estaban construyendo. There was a confusion. We thought it was because of what we were constructing, but no, they said it was because of a truck that was outside because yeah. of the construction that was taking place. Nos contactamos con el inspector y nos dijeron que no procedía hasta que no nos llegara un warning. We contacted the inspector. He said that we could not proceed until we received a warning. Y fue aumentando la cantidad. Nos llegaban biles de dos o tres lugares y no sabíamos a qué lugar pagarlo cuando era una cantidad baja. The amount kept increasing, and we were getting bills from different locations. And as time went on and the bills kept coming in, the amount started low and it started increasing. We need your assistance either through a discount or perhaps a payment plan because apparently they're planning on placing a lien on our home. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Gracias. Okay, the next is 1A. Again, Rosemarie Allegra. Excuse me, um, you're disrupting the meeting. Whoever's yelling in the back, you're disrupting the meeting. You're going to ask to be, keep it down back there. Excuse me. 
You're still yelling out from the chambers? And that's disrupting the meeting. See, sir, you're still yelling out from the chambers. That's disrupting the meeting. And for the record, that appears to be Mr. Herman and Mr. Spindler. Okay, Mr. Herman, Mr. Spindler, you're still yelling out from the meeting. So um, please have a seat. Thank you. I was bring. I apologize. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, the the uh, property in question um, uh, is property that was um, owned by my parents, um, left to me. They've since they are deceased. Um, they uh, there was um, I guess uh, two years ago there were the tenants that are in the property had a lot of commercial vehicles and. Um, I guess building and safety sent something saying that um, those vehicles needed to be removed. I never received um, anything um, regarding that, um, and I guess because of the confusion of the property having been left to me in a trust but not having been um, put in my name. So it's still in my parents' name. And, um, okay, can I go on? It seems like there's a lot going on here. Okay, um, so the the um, the because I, I'm assuming that because of the property still being in my parents' name and they are deceased, that um, this is why I did not get anything telling me that you know there was going to be um, any kind of fees lobbied against the property or put against the property. Um, when I found out that there was an issue, um, I made sure that it was taken care of, but I did not realize that the fines had gone to any amount of money that, or any, anywhere close to where they have, which is about 1400 and some odd dollars. Um, and so I'm just asking the council to please take a look at that. And um, because of, I have death certificates for my parents and because of that, I'm hoping that um, I can have some sort of a reduction, um, you know, a payment plan, you know, et cetera, um, just something that would be helpful. Uh, yes, this is one. If you could uh, give us two weeks to work out with the constituent, maybe we can come up to some uh, arrangement. Okay, so I have a request to continue 1A and 1B for, just talk to the for two weeks. And Mr. President, that brings us to August 14. Okay, that'll be the order without objection. Are there any other uh, items on one? Yes, sir, there are. Okay, so as a block, uh, council members, we are we had public comment on one, two, and eight. Uh, we'll go ahead and open the roll on one, two, and eight, those remaining items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 11 ayes. Great, thank you very much. Uh, that takes us to item nine, um, and Councilwoman Martinez, did, did, was that circulated yet? It has, not. it has not. Okay, we'll go ahead and wait on that one then. Then we'll go ahead. We've got another presentation if Mr. Price is ready. The floor is yours once again. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. You're, you're disrupting the meeting. A presentation is part of the is part of the meeting. hasn't even hasn't even started. Um, uh, this is now the fourth warning in this same meeting to the same person, to Mr. Herman. If you disrupt the meeting again, uh, at this point, we're going to have to ask you to dismiss yourself from the council chambers. So that'll be your fair and final warning for today. Thank you, Mr. Price. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, from hip-shaking cumbias to uh, delectable pupusas, and of course, don't forget your empanadas. Uh, El Salvador is a small country with a big heart uh, and warm people. There's no denying their imprint uh, 
on this region and the contribution they've made uh, to our community. In fact, I got close and personal with the people of El Salvador last year when I attended the presidential inauguration. Uh, but you don't have to travel thousands of miles and board a plane for hours to get the full experience. This weekend, our friends at uh, Unicomdes will be celebrating El Dia del Salvadorino, right here in our own backyard, uh, Mr. Cedillo, uh, along Washington and Vermont Avenue. This Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 10, Angelinos from all ages can get a savory taste of the country's music, food, and authentic culture. I'm also incredibly touched to have been selected as the Grand Capitan for this annual fiesta, uh, now in its 17 years. So I hope to see some of my colleagues and friends out supporting uh, this special event uh, and that helps to bring the Salvadorian community together. So please join me in welcoming Raul Bar Barriana, president of Unicombis, uh, the producer of this event, uh, with some special remarks. Raul. Good morning, Mrs. and Mr. Council Member, Mr. President, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. To me, it's an honor to be here at this City Council, presenting by Mr. Price here. We want to, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Price, Council Member of District 9, for all his support for, for our, co our community, for the Salvadorian community. We feel it. They, we, he want to work with us. It is, uh, to me, time to say thanks to him for everything he do for, uh, for our community. Thank you, Mr. Price. I would like to say thank you to Council Member Mr. Cedillo for his, his support also for our community in order to celebrate our culture, identity, and religious for this community, for this big, big uh, Salvadorian community in this district. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo, for all your support. Thank you, Mr. Price, for all your support. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you oh, very much. Thank you very much. Thank, 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 thank you, you, Raul. Uh, and again, on behalf of a uh, grateful uh, city of Los Angeles, we want to thank you for your outstanding uh, contributions in creating this event, organizing this event. Uh, we, we know we've got uh, uh, representatives from El Salvador who are visiting here with us uh, and other dignitaries, and we're just so proud uh, that uh, we're bringing the community together, celebrating in a way that enhances and encourages all us all to appreciate the rich cultural diversity uh, that is Los Angeles. Uh, today we are all Salvarinos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe you step out. You step out here and get it here. Come on in here. All right, thank you so much. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, go into general public comment. So we'll start off first with Mr. Walsh.
John Walsh, blogging at J. Walsh Confidential, uh, chairman of the Anybody But Mitch Englander for Supervisor Committee. Uh, please check out what the LA Times just did. The LA Times buckled under the LAPD and fired their political cartoonist, uh, Ted Rawl. Put in Ted Rawl fired, find what's happening. But I was corrected last time I got up here by the city attorney on some tiny little point. So I challenge the city attorney and anybody up here to correct me on this statement. The mayor of the city of Los Angeles has a gay lover named Glenn Dake, which he appoint, spousal gay lover, which he appointed to the, uh, to the regional water board without listing him as his spouse in the, uh, for FPCC. This is a violation of law. Now, if there's anybody up here who, who wants to contradict that the mayor has a gay lover, be my guest. Thank you, Mr. Herman. You know, a person shouldn't be threatened coming into this chambers. And when you pull a rope off thinking you're going to come and arrest me, try it. Because you're in violation of my First Amendment right to participate in a fucking meeting. Butt out. It's called harassment. The last time in 2014 when you injured my arm, you prick. That was serious. But it wasn't from you. It was from Peppa Pig. Stop harassing people and threatening them in public meetings. You hearing that, big ears? That includes you. All you're interested in is District 5, County Supervisor. You don't qualify. You need to be recalled. All of you need to be recalled. I want my sidewalk and streets fixed first. Sidewalk and streets. Everyone doesn't want to pay for what you created, the problem to save streets, save sidewalks and streets. Wilts versus Los Angeles. Thank you very much, Mr. Spindler. It's already started running my time. The little, the little cocksucker from CD12 being paid to run for Council District 5, you will never win it. I already know that 90% of the voters know that anything coming out of LA, other than the trash to the Sunshine Canyon landfill, is not authorized. So, I have a certificate of upgrade to complete asshole, and today's winner is Councilwoman Nuri Martinez, for not showing up to a single sidewalk special meeting in any of the districts, including last night in Van Nuys in her own district office, ignoring the people. The people do not want to pay to fix your broken sidewalks. She's right there talking to one of the other people, not paying attention. You'll address the council as a and whole. And you're going to pay attention when you get as your asses recalled. Thank you so much. For your wonderful thoughts. Uh, Henry? Uh, see, I got 10. All right, ongoing temporary MOUs and MOU defined deductions account for every cent sheltered from pay of Hackman Cola Crasman in the past 25 years. And as you know, the city agreed to take and hold 10% of each city employee's pay and that the union agreed to take 100% of the benefit sum and hold in trust, subject to a lump sum principal and interest payment to laces and calpers in the future. And the future is now. And we see that the city used 10% of that money for their constituents in 35 planning districts. And we know that Mr. Rue made history by collecting, recovering $600,000 in less than one month. 
So how much of the rest of y'all got in your back pocket, in your, your cloakroom, or in the closet that y'all ain't uncovered yet? Now it's time to come out the closet. All right, that concludes general public comment. We're going to now recess the regular meeting and begin the special meeting. We're going to take, uh, because of the quorum as well, and in light of that, I want to make sure that we get through these special items, 10, 11, 12, and 13 together. But first, we're going to go ahead and call the roll for the special meeting. Blumenfield, Bonner, Bluskay, Nosadio, Engler, Fuentes, Harris, Dawson, Wiesar, Koretz, Krikorian, Martinez, O'Farrell, Price, Rue, Wesson. 11 members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Okay, so it'll be a minute on each, 10, 11, 12, and 13, A through, uh, is it A and B? Together. And, we'll and those are items for which public hearings have not been held. Ten votes are required for consideration. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, open the roll for consideration on that. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Eleven ayes. Those all, those items are before us as a block. And we're going to go ahead and now take public comment cards on those items together. Uh, so items 10, 11, and 12. Herman. First of all, in Los Angeles regarding housing and community investment departments, Henry Marine brought it out very well. Corruption, fraud, and abuse. You continue to take the public's money for your own interest. Sad to say, but yet rent escrow account, reap, as I call it, rape, it's something good you, you're used to, because you like raping people in the city of Los Angeles. Going into item number 11, relative to permitting a portion of the exploratory drilling as part of Harbor Boulevard for a way of realignment. Maybe you should realign your way of thinking Maybe you should be comprehensive in your plan to make Los Angeles a livable place in the harbor. Oh, by the way, Joe Buschiano lays sidewalks. Ain't that a bitch? You know how to lay sidewalks? You ought to learn how to do your job here in council and protect the welfare of every public constituent and serve them. Don't parade around here on a puppet show saying that you're fixing sidewalks for under $1,000 because most people in Los Angeles don't have $1,000 to fix their sidewalks. Are you listening, Mr. Chair? Are you listening? Yes, please continue. Great. Got your bigger attention. Please Good. continue. Stay on the items. And in regards to item 12, Mr. Big Ears, running for District 5, Elf. Stay on the items. I if am you're not, If you're not going to stay on the elf. items and editorialize Relative off the Relative to items, professional service contract between the city of Los Angeles, why do you need a relative professional service? You mean to tell me that the people in the city that you hire to do business for the public can't provide a service? Prove and authorize that the general manager has done an excellent finance job to include all following language? The city attorney can't even read an ordinance right to protect us under the Brown Act. Isn't that crazy, Monopoly man? Crazy. And yet, under the term and services to be approved under the rules, election, intergovernmental relations, and neighborhoods and committees waived? Such transparency Welcome, Mr. Calderon. All of you are like Calderon, who's in the paper, making the headlines. Is it true? Is it fact? Is it fiction? Do your goddamn job. Okay, Wayne, on items 10, 11, and 12, once again, I will remind you to stick to those items, not off topic, but on the agenda. Thank you. Yes, your, your Royal Highness. Now, 
We, we're aggregating three completely different items, which proves this is a kangaroo court. So we go to number 10. What is it? REAP. So congratulations to the property owner at 990 East 41st Street. He's been emancipated from the slavery under current prices regime in CD9, and he once again can collect his rent. Now we get to CD15. My God, Joe Buscaino is now a member of the Ewing family. He's drilling for oil in CD15. Well, God damn, Ewing Oil is back in business. Da 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 Okay, and you're not on the you're not on top. He's drilling for oil in in C D fifteen. He wants to have exploratory drillings. Maybe he's drilling for water. Maybe he'll strike. You gotta address the body as a whole. Thank you. You're a dumb shit. I'm on the Okay, so again, not on topic. You little you little rat. Okay, that was your last warning. Thank you. Your your time is up, sir. Thank you very much. Warned you before you came up. Told you three times during your, your comment. Sorry, sir. Thank you very much. You're off topic. Too many times. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Oh, you can stay in chambers if, unless you're going to disrupt this meeting. Now you're disrupting the meeting. You're still... Okay. Ha have a nice weekend. Now we're going to ask you to leave the chambers. Very. What, you're, being, you're being asked to leave the chambers. Uh, sergeants, please show them out. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. Uh, f for the record, he is still yelling from the audience. Yes. He's continued to yell from the audience. He's still yelling from and is still disrupting this meeting as we're waiting and continue to wait. And the general public is also continuing to wait. He's still disrupting this meeting once again. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Have a nice weekend. All right. Okay, Mr. Walsh on items 10, 11, and 12 as well. John Walsh blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org or Jay Walsh Confidential tweeting at Hollywood Dems. Uh, number 10 is another success story. Thanks to uh, the city council, I believe Jackie Goldberg was the, uh, started this uh, REAP program. Uh, a landlord at 990 East 41st Street hadn't kept his uh, unit up to code. <clears throat> it was uh, a complaint was lodged. The landlord has now repaired it, the city has checked it, and now the landlord will resume getting the rent paid to him. Uh, I am a renter in L.A. since 1976. Okay, now, uh, exploratory drilling, I'm not sure whether it's necessary. You say it's necessary, but it makes a, a two-and-a-half-foot uh, pock pockmark on, on the street of Los Angeles. I'm not going to harass you on that, because <clears throat> there's so many issues where you're dead wrong, I'm not going to go after you when you might be right and you might be wrong. Uh, this Union Bank is being paid an enormous amount of money to do the banking services for uh, neighborhood council checking accounts. Uh, these, uh, this money is, uh, is mostly, really it's a gift, because the amount of money that, uh, the amount of checking that these neighborhood councils do is very, very insignificant. But you're paying off, this is a way to pay off Union Bank, and as you say, see, it, it's over a page, almost a page and a half of fine prints on, uh, this uh, services contract between the city. And was it sent out to bid? No, it wasn't. It's a sweetheart contract. And remember, I don't need every second. I like to give you a gift of 57 seconds of silence. Thank you very much. And uh, final speaker for item 10 is Patricia Schumann. 
Patricia? Oh, okay. Yeah, come on up. Take your time. Come on up. You don't have to run. It's all good. Good morning. Good morning. I, I just need them. Um, I have a document to, um, to show to Mr. Uh, Charlie Kalaliva that I have a power of attorney to help the uh, Haley Mesa's family with their case, but he's not acknowledged. She's not acknowledging the document, so I'm here to show that it's a legal document that I want him to hear my case before uh, we go any farther. So okay, did you want to just go ahead and submit your document to the, uh, to the sergeant? So we can officially note that and have a copy for the record as well. Power of attorney that I got for the family. They don't live here in California. They live in Utah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes the public comment cards on items 10, 11, 12, and 13. She's adding it in. If you give her a second, then we won't have to take it separate. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and open the roll on 10, 11, 12, and 13. We'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Those items are approved. Thank you very much. And that will now convene the special meeting. Oh, we have one more on item 14. I'm sorry. On item 14, uh, 13A and B forthwith is a request per Council Member Huizar. That'll be the order without objection. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Krikorian. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Item number 14 is a recommendation of settlement by the City Attorney. Budget and Finance recommends approval of the City Attorney's recommendation. And that can be done in open session unless members have okay. questions or concerns. Okay, then that, um, and Council Members, are any. Any questions or concerns or reasons we should go into closed session on that item that was heard in budget and finance on Monday per Council Member Kikorian? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and open the roll. And, and yes. if, if I may, sir, there is a recommendation uh, for settlement in the amount of $230,000. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the roll on item 14. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Great, thank you very much. Mr. President. Um, and we'll go ahead and send 12 and 14 forthwith as well. That'll be uh, Excuse me, um, somebody's yelling out again. Mr. Herman, this is yet another warning to you that you're yelling out and disrupting the meeting. Do not yell out and disrupt this meeting. You'll be asked to leave the council chambers. Um, that will conclude Mr. the President, special uh, meeting. Item 11, could you also send forthwith for so, Mr. Piscaino? Uh, all the items on the special meeting then will be forthwith without objection. That'll be the order today. Okay, okay thank you very much. Not a problem. So with that, now we'll go ahead and uh, convene the special meeting, and we'll go ahead and and take back the uh, the regular meeting. And with that, we also M will reconsider. Mr. Yes. President, uh, so for clarification, we're adjourning the special. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. And with that, we uh, will go ahead and let's take up the ordinance matters once again. Very good, sir. Those would be uh, reconsideration for items three, four. Five and six. Okay, we'll go ahead and open the roll on those items. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Great, thank you very much. The now I believe we have item nine before. Mm, uh, us. I'm sorry, sir. The first vote was for uh, reconsidering them. Now those are right, okay. before. Go ahead you. and open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Kikorian. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask that uh, item 7 be sent forthwith, please. Okay, item 7 will be forthwith without objection. That'll be the order as well. Thank you. Okay, for number 9, we do have uh, three cards on item 9, or two cards, I should say, on item 9 as well. Michael Mitchell, please come on up. City Council members, uh, my name is Michael Mitchell. I represent the residents of Firmament Avenue affected by this uh, proposal. Um, over the last year, we've worked extensively with Council Member Martinez's office, the planning department, and the developer. 
And what you see before you is the best compromise we could hope to achieve. I don't think everybody got what they wanted, but I think it's the best deal. And I just want to urge the city council members to approve the uh, amendment as you see before you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Herman, on item 9. Now, this is about Plum, if I'm right. And we all heard about the organization of Plum, similar to the zoning changes that affected many of our communities, brought by Paul Krikorian, the Armenian Do Jew. not address any particular member. Stick to the I item. Stick to the item. I'm about a continued consideration by false mitigation to declare negative declaration by improperly using planning department Why is Doug on land use. So, Mr. Speaker, the public is unaware of the crimes that Plum and land use management and the Department of Building Safety have brought against the city of Los Angeles, and more so the city attorney who doesn't care about the Special Olympians under the American Disability Act when it comes to zone change. So at 7061 North, is that uh, Furman Avenue? Did I pronounce that right, Mr. Biggers? Can you help me? And Again, this is under item number 914-16666-CD6. You know, all these numbers like 666 don't represent nothing evil because the evil is among you, the way you use you're not Plum. On the, you're not on the item. I'm talking about Plum. No, you're talking about the council, not about Plum. No, I'm talking about Plum. I'm talking about 6666-CD6 regarding item number nine. If you turn the nine around, it looks like a six. Evil, evil number six, like you evil bastards. All right, thank you very much. Um, seeing no other and cards, we have the amending motion has been circulated. <laughs> Councilwoman Martinez, did you no, wish to Thank see? you very much, Mr. President. So the motion has been, the amending motion has been circulated. I just move that we approve as amended. Okay, and uh, so that'll be the ask from Councilwoman Martinez. Seeing no other speakers on the queue, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. Twelve ayes. That is approved. Thank you very much. And did you wish that to go forth with as well? Okay, then we'll go ahead and take now um, item number two for reconsideration. Now that we've got 12 members as well as an ordinance, we'll go ahead and open the roll for reconsideration on item two. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Members, that item is now before us. Seeing no speakers on the queue, we'll go ahead and open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved. Thank you very much. I believe that concludes the agenda. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Um, and uh, with that, members, do we have any general public or any announcements from, uh, from the colleagues? Council Member O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm kicking off my summer film series in the 13th District. Starting tomorrow night at Echo Park Lake, we are showing the classic film Quinceanera, uh, filmed nine years ago in Echo Park uh, on location uh, with a local cast and crew uh, with Echo Park filmmakers, and it won the Jur Grand Jury Prize Award at Sundance that year. It stars uh, Emily Rios and Jesse Garcia. Uh, it is an adult-themed film. However, all families are welcome to attend, just knowing that. But it is a beautiful, beautiful film uh, about wonderful characters in Echo Park. And it screens tomorrow night at Echo Park Lake at 8 p.m. And everyone is invited to attend and enjoy the film. It's are you bringing any of the actors? Uh, members, any other announcements? Try to contact them right now. Mr. Fuentes. Movie theme, Mr. President, tonight at the Pacoima City Hall, uh, right when the sun goes down, Wreck-It Ralph, family-friendly film for all families. Uh, come enjoy the movie at Pacoima City Hall. Excellent. Any other announcements, members? I I've got one. Last night we had a revisit Reseda Boulevard. It was the city's 
actually first great street and it was it was absolutely spectacular a wonderful uh, great event a lot of people showed up three neighborhood councils were all there in participation as well as uh, the chamber many other neighborhood councils that came out as well from throughout the san fernando valley but three that partnered with us on the great street and northridge sparkle and did a phenomenal job on Reseda boulevard for the great street so i urge all of you to come out and check it out it's 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 fantastic with that also um, i did read in the paper this morning that council member fuentes also had um, a unique opening of, uh, of a block. Can you tell us a little bit about that real quick as well? Well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, but uh, before I forget, uh, we had a constituent show up late for item 1C. And so I'd like to, if it's okay, move for reconsideration. And if it passes, to ex ask for a two-week extension on that. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, item 1C was received and filed, and as much as the lien has been paid in full, would do you still wish to reconsider? Uh, no. <laughs> Very good, sir. All righty. So uh, <laughs> with that, um, and it wasn't forthwith, so if need be, we can bring it back later at another meeting. So with that, uh, colleagues, seeing no other announcements, do we, have, do we have any adjourning motions? We have one adjourning motion, so we're going to ask all council members and everybody in chambers as well to please rise. Everybody please rise for an adjourning motion. Council Member Rue. Um, I have two adjourning motions today. Um, first one is on July 21st, 2015, the Oscar and Tony Award winning actor Theodore Bickle, who originated the role of Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music on Broadway, and starred in Fiddler on the Roof in thousands of onstage performances died at the age of 91. Uh, Bickle is survived by his wife, Amy Ginsburg Bickle, sons Rob and Danny, stepsons Zev and Noam, G Noam Ginsburg, and three grandchildren. I therefore move that the city adjourn in respect of his memory and that the certificate of tribute sent to his, br br his bereavement, bereaved family. Secondarily, I know many of us know this person. Um, I am very saddened to announce that on July 23rd, 2015, longtime Los Angeles resident and community activist Abdul Saab passed away at the age of 69. And for those who don't know, Abdul Saab is the chief of protocol for LA County's husband, Lourdes Saab. Yeah. I just saw him about two months ago, and I thought he was very healthy, but. Abdo was educated in Jesuit schools in Lebanon and studied civil engineering in France. He came to Los Angeles in 1972 and fell in love with the Mexican-born Angelino Lourdes, a community liaison, a former community liaison for the Los Angeles mayor's office. Abdo began a long, illustrious career as a businessman, quickly rising quickly to vice president of downtown LA Motors. He went on to partner with associates on several business ventures, a travel agency, and Venus, and in venues. He was active in political community, local law enforcement, and was a volunteer advisor to federal and local administrations for the Middle East. Abdel deeply cared about civil liberties and justice. Abdel loved his family dearly and acted selflessly in every imaginable way. He will be missed by all the lives he touched and most importantly by the family he leaves behind. Abdel is survived by his wife, Lourdes Saab, and daughters, Leanne and Jessica. I therefore move that the city adjourn in respect of his memory and the certificate of tribute be sent to his family. And for those who are interested, his funeral is this Saturday at Old North Church in Forest Lawn at 12 o'clock. Great. Thank you very much for those. Seeing no other adjourning motions, then this council meeting is now officially adjourned. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Thank you.